All right, we are back. Welcome. We are working on doing our ethnic art doll painting part four. So today, uh, I just want to recap what we've already done in case you're kind of jumping on here and you hadn't watched the first two videos. We had done some washes and then we had done some texture. And now uh, we are going to continue on, but we're going to go back to doing another wash, okay? I know it sounds kind of weird, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna do it uh, in a little bit of a different method. The, the first method we did, we had applied your wash using our mop brush and just put it right on and left it, okay? This time, we're going to take, make sure there's nothing in here, going to take my yellow wash. This is a little bit more of a brighter yellow in the kind of pot that I've got here. It is a little bit different than this wash. You can kind of see there's a slight difference of hue. Um, these are my primaries that I use to kind of do everything to get started and then I'll use those colors to make the secondaries and then I'll use my secondaries and my primaries to make my tertiary so it kind of keeps going from there. So um, with the yellow, and I will show you because I still have this lovely little guy here from last time, which I'm going to put right over here. Anyways, so the yellow that we're using, I had just got done mixing up some more of it. So you're using um, one part pigment to three parts thinner, but the difference with this one is that we are not just using the primary colors that we are started with, but we're using those colors plus the colors that they've created. Um, this one is our primary yellow, but in addition to that, I did add a little bit more pigment to it. So this one is probably closer to two parts pigment to three parts thinner, okay? But look at how the color is different, okay? That is the, the one, I'm gonna show you what our primary yellow will look like. Try to get rid of some of that excess on my brush. Okay. And our primary yellow. So the primary yellow is a lot more transparent than this guy, okay? This one is a lot more brighter, and this one's a lot more transparent because we've got one part pigment to three parts thinner, a couple drops of baby oil, where this guy, as I start working with it, I will use, ugh, if I can get it off, um, I use the two parts pigment to three parts thinner. So it's a little bit more bold in color. And you don't have to do it this way, this is just the way I created these guys. Um, so it's a little bit bolder in color, but it's still subtle enough where you can do thin washes and it's not going to be overpowering on your kit. Grab my little zippy. Isn't that cute? So by now, you should have completed, oops, I should turn it this way so you guys can see this way. Um, you should have completed your uh, six rounds of texture using three of the magenta and three of the salmon color. And the difference between the texture and the washes was that the washes we did everything and where the texture, we kind of avoided some more particular areas like the forehead and the cheeks and the lips, um, the inside of the ear, uh, the palms of your hand, of the hands, the bottoms of the feet. So it's a little bit different. with. This concept, I did go in and I decided to kind of add a, just a touch of texture, but I wanted it soft. And so what I did is I added just a slight amount in those areas and I used my um, kabuki brush or your foundation brush in my um, matter. Sorry, my dog's going to get loud. And I pounced those areas out to soften those. So you can see that it's reflecting more of that highlighting effect versus uh, uh, having that color absorbed and being more dense. 
So today I'm going to continue on, but we're going to do a little bit different with the yellow washes. We're going to apply it the same way that we had done our washes initially, but now I'm going to kind of pull off some of the color when we're done. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay, there we go. My camera is kind of being weird. I swear the yellow like is like cursed. Anyways, um, I am applying the yellow like we did originally, applying it everywhere, okay? Inside the ear, but we're going to do it a little bit differently when it comes to some other areas. Give me just a second. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go right into the other areas that we did. And inside those nostrils the best we can. And then we're going to take our texture sponge that we didn't load any paint onto and we're going to use that. Ugh, my, this little, the hole in the flange is really small so it's hard to hold. And I'm going to kind of pick up any excess color with my sponge instead of doing um, dry brushing or anything like that, I'm going to use my texture sponge. The benefit with that is that even though you're using your sponge to kind of pick it up, it's also kind of softening the wash a little bit by leaving behind a little bit of a texture to it. My yellow is seriously like not liking the camera. <laughs> Every time I work with yellow, it it's like acting really weird. Okay, I don't know how much you guys seen the last time. I'm going to edit this and do the best I can. But we are picking up the excess paint using our yellow texture sponge. So it's going to pick up any excess, but it's also going to leave behind a little bit more of a texture imprint in the wash as if that makes sense. I'm struggling with this yellow layer because my camera, it keeps going in and out of focus. So I'm, I'm getting like the video um, recorded and I'm talking and then I look, glance over and I notice that um, it's all blurry and out of focus. So sorry, I will try to stitch together these videos so it makes sense. Anyways, so I was saying uh, when you pick up the yellow by using your texture sponge after you apply it in a wash format, it will pick up the excess color, but it will leave behind a little bit of a very subtle imprint of the texture sponge. And then you just keep wringing out your sponge over your paint to absorb any extra paint that you might have uh, accumulated. You shouldn't notice a lot, but it's just going to be something that will subtly build up slowly, okay? And you can do this right off the bat if you want, or you can um, skip it and only do it at certain points in the process. It's just really something that you gotta play around with and make it your own, figure out what works for you. Okay. So you can see as we had already pounced out the face. The face has a very nice color building up and it has almost like a little bit of an iridescent texture to it. It's very hard to see unless you knew you were looking for it, you wouldn't probably notice it, but it does make enough of an impact when you're doing several layers that it'll look really cool and it will look like really good skin. So I'm gonna let the head flash. I'm gonna continue on doing the arms and the legs. Okay guys, I'm sorry. The yellow, I swear is cursed, this color, because every time I try working on it, I end up um, having issues with the recording. So I'm gonna have to stitch together a bunch of videos because the camera, seems to want to keep going out of focus. So I'm going to try to be really careful and make this work, but I'm going to continue on painting the limb 
doing everything, doing the hand, avoiding the nail bed though, that's the one thing. Just gonna go on, watching my video carefully, making sure that it's still good. I'm gonna use my brush to kind of get in between those fingers. Yellow, I'm gonna do everything, okay? Then I'm gonna take my texture sponge again and I'm gonna lift some of that color up by just absorbing the excess color with our texture sponge. By doing that, it's leaving behind an imprint in our wash that will have a kind of textured appearance. So it'll actually help build that skin to be super realistic. Now you could do this with all your washes if you wanted to. You don't have to, but you can. Um, the other thing is that if you did this and you picked up your yellow using just a plain cosmetic wedge, not having been um, made into a texture, it's not gonna have the same effect. Yes, it will pick up the excess color, but no, it does not leave behind any imprint that will be kind of like a hidden layer beneath the layers. So unfortunately, my camera is like keeps going out of focus whenever I'm doing this series, the yellow in particular. So um, I did finish the one arm and I'm gonna continue on doing the next three limbs so i'm going to continue painting there we go i'm going to continue painting uh the other arm and the legs doing the same method we're going to apply the wash with our mop brush and we're going to lift excess color with our texture sponge and if needed wringing out that sponge over your jar of paint okay and continuing lifting and that will leave behind a little trace of texture, but it will still allow that color to be left as well. So that's the key, okay? You can either do it straight or you can do it with your texture sponge. It's up to you, but I like doing it this way because you're painting everything, you're giving everything a nice um, color and bringing a lot of depth to the limb, but you're also bringing texture at the same time. So that's where I do that. So that's your homework. I want you to do three rounds of your yellow texture, doing your flashing between each round, or if you're doing air dry, make sure you let it completely cure between each layer. And then we're gonna move on to doing the next round, just like this, using our washes, but picking it up with our texture. And with that one, I will show you on to lavender. I will try to show you on my brush before the camera goes out of focus. And then meanwhile, um, while I'm catching up, I will definitely work on a better camera solution. So I'm gonna show you the consistency of the lavender. And again, you can make all of these colors using your primary, using your Genesis Red, Ultramarine Blue, and your Genesis Yellow. Um, but see how faint that, that lavender is? It's just a nice, uh, subtle lavender. And again, if you forgot how to create that purple, the red and the blue is gonna give you the purple. And you can mute the color by using a little bit more thinner, but with these paints, we're doing two parts pigment to three parts thinner versus our washes being one part pigment and three parts thinner. So with this guy, I might add just a little bit more of my red to it and my blue to just give it a little extra bump of color. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll do one layer and see if I like it and I'll go from there. Hi guys, welcome back. Okay. I'm trying something a little different, uh, so I apologize uh, for the weird angle, but I moved my camera a little bit higher. Uh, it's kind of a weird concoction. If you could see what I have done, it's, you'd laugh. But hopefully this will work better and give you a little better lighting and keep the camera in focus while we're doing this. 
but I wanted to um, talk to you about part four. So on part three, we had done a textured technique. Now, today, we're moving on to purple. Okay, okay, let me explain why. So, when we're looking at our chart here, let me just wipe it off a little bit. Right now, we have, Zippy is in kind of a, that orangey stage. I'm gonna show you. We we're kind of, kind of experimenting so you can kind of see the colors that we've been using. Um, Zippy is in that orangey stage. So we had talked about the goal being uh, little Zippy to taking the two colors that we work together with. Oh, We've yeah. got our orange hue. We want to continue getting that a little bit more of a richer, um, darker tone. We're not quite there yet. It'll take a little, little while longer, but I wanted to show you kind of what I'm talking about. So if we go over to, hang on one second. Okay, so if we look at this color right here, um, I don't know if you guys can see with that camera, so I'm going to turn it around this way and show you on this camera. So here we've got this color here, okay? That color is our target or our goal to reach. So when we did our other washes, we casted that orangey hue, okay? But now that we've gotten that orangey hue, we're going to add purple so that we can cast more of this kind of a darker hue in that in between okay I know it sounds really confusing I'm hoping that I'm explaining as best as I can on how to achieve that um, but we're taking our primaries and our secondaries creating our treacheries if you're not familiar with how that works you get your color wheel out okay with the color wheel let's see here so here is your red Oops, I'm sorry, your red, yellow, and your blue. Those are your primaries. Your secondaries are the color that's in between, okay? So then you've got orange, green, and violet. So if you mixed red and blue, you're going to get violet. If you mixed yellow and red, you're going to get orange. If you mixed yellow and blue, you're going to get green. Now, we're going to take that last layer that we did, which was like kind of a salmon pink color right through here, and we're going to add a little bit, of, so that's kind of in the red family, and we're going to add a little bit more of that purple family so that we're going to get a darker hue, okay? Hue is like the amount of tone a color has, um, so that is kind of the goal. Today... Let's get Zippy out here. I love this kid. This is so cute. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do the purple round using our a little bit more dense coloring with the purple for these colors, like your secondaries and your treachery colors. The consistency of the mix is a little different. So instead of being one part pigment to three parts, thinner, this one I usually will do two parts pigment to three parts thinner, okay? So you're wanted a little bit more of that richer color, and I'll show you on here kind of what color we're, we're working with, okay? And get my mop brush out, and there's our purple, so it's kind of that pretty lavender purple color, okay? That is the next color we're going to work with you're basically doing a wash but you're lifting the excess color using your texture sponge so that it leaves a little bit of like a texture look behind and you can achieve that like most often times when i see people doing washes let me see if i can get zippy to sit still they take their cosmetic wedge right and they will pop off the top maybe <laughs> So they'll have this texture. And you can either just rip the top off and do that, which it will leave a very slight texture, but I want it to be much more significant so you can see the difference. Um, so instead of lifting color with this sponge, I'm gonna lift it with my texture sponge. That'll leave behind that indentation or 
that kind of slight texture underneath, okay? It makes it really natural looking. So I'm going to continue on. We're going to start with Zippy's head here. Let me grab our lavender. Come on. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to start again with the back. Let me get my glasses on here. And we're going to draw that paint going forward. Okay. And with this one, I'm going to avoid some certain areas. So we're going to draw your paint forward. I always like paint and pull the paint forward versus going backwards. Um, it's just easier to control that way. I'm going to go over the bridge of the nose, kind of around the eyes at a little bit of an angle and kind of go past that brow bone and up into the forehead, kind of like that. Drawing all that paint in there. I'm going to go across the nose right on the bottom, like on each side of the nose, okay? On the upper lip, underneath the lip, and just kind of do that, okay? So we left those areas out, and I'm going to go, and I usually start with the, like the edges around where I left um, some of that soft kind of reflective areas. You don't want it to look like you have like a, a obvious triangular discoloration there. You're trying to create a uh, reflection of the light so it's more um, soft in those areas would be I guess would be the best way to describe it. It doesn't have to be perfect uh, but I'm going to just hit those edges kind of softening them up a little bit. You can do this using your dry brush as well if you don't want to use this. I'm going to hit the like the ear, the edges of the ear and the back of the ears, but I'm not going to go on the inside inside yet. I know we'll explain that later. I got to get my hands to cooperate. Sometimes I feel like I repeat, my, well, I know I repeat myself quite often, but hopefully you'll be able to take information out of here and apply it to your techniques. And I always keep saying, make it your own, make it your own. Okay. And use my dry brush. I'm just gonna kind of get in there. And this is where, one of these um, brushes come in handy, a kabuki brush. This is just a foundation brush from EcoTools. And I can put the link again in the description if you didn't see it on the other video. So here where we had left those kind of a triangular shape on the forehead and on the cheeks, I'm just going to pull the paint away from those areas. Even though I used my texture sponge, I'm still going to do it again with my dry brush. Now this is an optional thing. If you want, you don't have to, but it does help reflect it, that light a little bit better. So you can kind of see where we're at. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. So let me continue on. Before I do that, which I always forget, uh, because I don't do crease colors, um, I will hit some areas with each color that I do but like for the purple you can go like inside the ear in just the little crevices where it's a little darker because you want to create a uh, shallowness with the the paint making it look like it's a lot of depth in there go inside the nostril if you're doing a zippy go inside the mouth and for this one, I think I'm going to go just on the bottom of the lip a little bit. 
just on the edge. Mm, okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to continue on doing our arm, but we're not going to do the palms. We're not going to do um, the bottom of the feet, okay? So that is the one thing I want you to remember. Make sure you're getting around the flange area. And I always kind of start at the top and I draw my paint down top of the hand, um, tops of the fingers. Go up to the wrist, but don't go past. Just kind of going up using my brush kind of very carefully. There we go. And you can use your texture sponge. You can use your dry brush. I'm going to kind of do a combination of both. And you can do whatever you want. But like I said, you know, this is just where I start getting creative and playing and doing different things um, based on what I want to see the overall results to appear. Okay, just absorbing any of that excess color, but we're leaving behind that little bit of texture. I flip it over, use the edge of my texture brush or texture sponge to kind of get out any of the paint that might be pooling. Okay, I'm just going to use my kabuki brush and hit the edges here. I think this is working a little bit better, so knock on wood and we'll see. So kind of like what I was saying before, you should by now start seeing some color variations start changing and evolving, which is really fun. Because um, this is where I really get excited and I start taking my before and after photos so I can keep track of the progress. Um, because sometimes you forget how far you actually have gone without looking back. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm just going to do the top of the arm. Now this one, uh, in the past, I had kind of skipped the elbow. You can. I'm going to just leave just that little bit of elbow right on the top for this layer. And I'm going to draw this down to the wrist going over the top of the hand, avoiding the underside of the fingers. And you can do this with like a smaller brush if you are more comfortable. Um, if you want, you don't have to. So the only, well, let me go do this first. I'm just gonna kind of pull that away. Throwing that away. Okay, now I'm just going to absorb up the excess color. The nice thing about this too is that because you're pulling off that um, excess color, you're able to have it flash a lot faster. Um, when you're doing air dry, I, I don't honestly know how it will, you know, affect you but hopefully uh, it will be something that you can experiment with and play around and see how it works. Please let me know too. I would love to hear your oops, I'd love to hear your feedback on how it worked for you using air dry. Uh, just because I haven't played with air dry, I don't really know for sure how well it will work doing that. I'm just going to pounce right on that area I was kind of avoiding. You can see how your nails get full of paint. Okay. Now, I always keep like a little towel on my lap too, so that if I have any oil that's on my fingers that I can kind of hit it. I'm going to go right inside here because we're going to create a little bit more depth in there. 
and we're going to do that between the fingers with this with this layer I can get my fingers to turn we're going to go underneath just in those areas where it would be a little more darker I'm going to hit those creases like I said before I don't do crease color I build it up naturally over time and then we're going to go on to the leg Starting at the top. This is the one exception that, oops, I really, I want to avoid the knee just a little bit. And put this one, I, if you get it on the knee, it's not a big deal. Um, I'm just going to kind of pull it away a little more. Okay. If you get it on the knee, it's not a big deal. But this is just one area that I'm going to start playing around with. I go to just about where the heel is, but don't go past the heel. You're gonna go just at the top of the foot, about yay, okay? The tops of the toes, it's got, a, it's got a little bit of a curliness to it, so. Now with this one, the arch of the foot is kinda angled where the arch is a little bit higher, so I'm gonna actually avoid going too low, and I'm gonna stay up higher on that arch. Then I'm going to go ahead and kind of pounce out those edges using our little texture sponge. Okay. And wringing out your sponge if you start getting too much paint accumulated in your sponge, okay? And I'm going to keep working through this, hitting as much of that area as I can so that there's just a little bit of that coloring left behind. The goal is to do really thin, thin layers and build it up slowly because that, that'll look the most natural. I'm going to do the same thing with the toes and so I don't waste paint I just kind of tap my paint or my brush on my sponge uh, when I'm using it I'm going to go between these toes and because it's got a little bit of a hollow hollowness like under the toes because of the way it's curved I'm going to go underneath the toes as well and hit those creases okay building up our creases slowly and then we'll move on to the other okay last limb I think what I was going to tell you is that the one exception is I really do love using the mop brushes for doing washes but if you look you, I don't know if you can tell but sometimes with these mop brushes it wants to shed where like the bristles want to shed where I haven't had problems with makeup brushes so that's why I use makeup brushes a lot too um, and they work a lot nicer okay just gonna kind of leave that knee open a little bit up to the heel sorry it's gonna get loud my dogs are barking going to go right up to the edge a little bit higher on the arch and going to go here okay and I'm going to take my texture sponge hit the edges there perfect and I'm going to hit the edges out through here, just pulling that paint away. And then I'm going to absorb the excess paint. Wringing out my sponge over my jar of paint so that I'm not wasting any paint. By doing it this way, it's going to build up your color a little faster, but 
it's going to leave that pretty hue in between the different layers so it it looks a lot more natural and a lot more like skin okay i think i'm pretty good there just gonna go in here real quick make sure i'm not pulling I hit the knee just to soften that out a bit and then i'm going to go in between the toes Any of those areas that you're working on on your kit that have shallowness or indentations, that's where you want to hit it with your colors to create more depth. All right. I just want to make sure I don't have too much through here. I'll just hit my dry brush. All right. Now, the next thing we have to do is just wait for our kit to finish flashing. And we're going to repeat this process two more times. So we should have a total of three rounds of our lavender doing this um, texture wash technique. So you should have done the yellow texture wash washes. You should have three of those done. And then you will be finishing this one doing three rounds of the lavender texture wash. And then when we move on to our fifth video, uh, we will kind of go back doing a little bit more of texture and going away from the, the washes. So we won't be doing as much washes, but now we're going to be bouncing back and forth. So if you're enjoying hanging out and you're learning something new, please make sure you hit that bell and follow. I'd really love your support. And don't forget to leave your comments below because I really enjoy reading your comments and being able to kind of work with what questions you have. And it certainly helps me kind of decide on what things I need to t talk about in our videos. So I love that. And I, I love having you guys be part of this. So thank you so much again. And I will see you in part five.